no matter how old you get. I honestly did think that by the time I got in my 30s and 40s, I would have it figured <laughs> out and what joke that you're, was. You're the 50s. Yes, <laughs> what a joke that was. But that's but we are further. We're further along than we were. We can look mm-hmm. back. Um, but still, God continues to teach us. Right. But yet, yeah, this is not Peter's worst moment, unfortunately. Right. We have to go back to the yeah. Gospels. And, and we're going to end today mm-hmm. not at a good spot, actually, are we? No, we're going to go back to the Last Supper. And the last time that Jesus was with his disciples. But they don't know that at the yeah. time. That... Right. So we're in Luke 22, and um, this is when Jesus, I'm I'm in verse 21, and it's when um, Jesus talks about the hand that's going to betray him. He's at the the supper, at the last supper, he takes the cup, um, but then it says, but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man that betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. And then also a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. So now they start (laughs) arguing, who's going to do this? Oh, well, who's the greatest? You know, so their conversation is all over the place. And definitely not focused on what Jesus is trying to teach them. They're a little bit confused, I think. But then it said, and Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater the one who is at the table or the one who serves. This is not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. You are, the, you are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink it at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And then he tells Peter, he looks at Peter and says, Simon, Simon, notice he doesn't use Peter this time. Right. Calls him Simon again his um, original name and says Satan has asked to sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you Simon that your faith may not fail and when you have turned back strengthen your brothers and then Peter Simon does not get it again he but he replied Lord I am ready to go with you to prison and to death Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three, you will deny three times that you know me. So Peter still, he, he didn't um, rebuke Jesus this time, right? but he did, no, I'm ready to go with you. Mm-hmm. So um, then we fast forward in this chapter. Um, one thing I do want to add to that is I do think it is important when Jesus is saying, Simon, Simon. Satan has demanded to have you and that he might sift you like wheat. The the Greek there is a plural you. Oh, so right. it is not necessarily that Simon is just looking at Peter like you're the only one Satan's after you. I mean, he's not sifting Peter. He's sifting all the disciples. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Satan, Satan has demanded to have all of them. And the reality is they're all going to run away. Um, but all but eleven of them will come back. Right. Yeah. And and then as we go forward into this um, chapter, you know, this is when uh, they go out to the Mount of Olives. Um, Jesus prays that the cup be taken from him. I'm going to fast forward because we'll talk about that later yeah. in later lessons. But we're going to fast forward to um, verse 54, and it says, Then seizing him, who they're talking about Jesus, he's being arrested, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And I'm pretty sure he's the only one of the disciples following at a distance. Yeah, it says something about one of the other, somebody who knew the high priest. So I think some people think that maybe John knew the high priest and let him in the door. But Peter is always at the right spot at the right time. Whether or not he does the right thing, but he is at the right spot. Right, yeah, he's following. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. 
A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. You know, right after that comes true, that he denies him three times, then the rooster crows, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Yeah. And this is probably the last time Peter thought he would ever look at the Lord. Yeah. Because he was crucified right after this, and Peter didn't really understand the whole story. Yeah. And so the weeping bitterly, I, I feel that. I feel my own, I don't know if it's always denial, but it's, it's you know, it can be that denial of... Just letting them down, letting him yeah, down. Yeah, letting him down and, have, and looking him in the eyes. And I don't think it was a rebuke look from Jesus. I think it was a turn back, I've prayed for you, you know, right. just kind of reminding yeah, him that I, he yeah. had prayed for you, that you would come back. He knew it would happen. And so, you know, the emotion here, it it hits me because I, I have walked in Peter's shoes. Right. And we think we can do it. You know, and mm -hmm. Peter was like, I'll never deny you. They may all deny you, but I never will. And then he does. Yeah. And so he weeping, not only has he let down Jesus, but he's let down himself and he he's he just feels worthless. Right. Yeah. And you know, we're we're gonna leave Peter here. Yeah, I think that uh we can't wrap this up with a bow. Um thankfully there is a there is Jesus is gonna come back and right. he's not done with Peter and right. he's gonna address this in a beautiful way. But uh, we do. We just want to end here with, with the Lord turning and looking at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Yeah. Such a heavy, heavy moment. And we want to leave it here. I mean, it gets better. Of course, you know, Jesus does rise from the dead and appears to them but right now is a time where we just want to you know chew on this yeah to just think about like you said you know humility we are humbled yeah and it's hard and we have to sit with the, those thoughts yeah so. uh you know i think it's beth moore that says you can go to your knees or you can let Jesus break your knees, but we're going down. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sometimes. And so it's better to bend the knee. Yeah. Thanks for listening and journeying with us on this side of the ceiling. See you next time.